Okay, in this video we are going to discuss how to factor polynomials by grouping. Okay, and before we do that, we're going to do this slide. And this slide is going to give us some kind of prerequisite knowledge that we're going to need in order to factor by grouping. So these are going to seem like uh, just some unrelated brain teasers, but they're actually really important, and you'll see why in a minute. So for now, just kind of play along. Uh, for this first one, we're going to look, look for two numbers that multiply to give us a negative 2. But when we add those same two numbers, we get 1. So I'm going to write that out, and I like to write it out like this. I want two numbers that when I multiply those numbers together, I get a negative 2. But when I add those same two numbers together, I get a 1. Well, start thinking about it. Okay, numbers that multiply to get 2, well, there's really only, um, you know, as far as integer factors, I really just have 1 and 2 that are the factors of 2. But I know they multiply to give me a negative 2. So I know that if they multiply to give me a negative, that either the first number is negative or the second number is negative. And I don't know if it's a negative 1 or if it's a negative 2 until we look down here at the second equation. I'm going to bring the same two numbers here, and I want them to add to get 1. So which one of these numbers should be negative for us to add them together and get 1? Well, hopefully you're thinking that, oh, I need the 1 to be negative. Because negative 1 times 2 is negative 2, and negative 1 plus 2 is 1. Okay, so our numbers that we're looking for are negative 1 and 2. Now, let's go to our second example. In our second example, we want our two numbers to multiply to give us a 21, but we want those same two numbers when we add them together to give us a negative 10. Well, just my reasoning here is that uh, my numbers are going to multiply to give me a positive. That means that both numbers could be positive or that both numbers could be negative because we also know that a negative times a negative is a positive, right? Well, based on that, I'm just thinking of my factors of 21, and the first ones that pop into my head are 7 and 3. And if I make them both negative, it looks like that will satisfy both equations because negative 7 times negative 3 is positive 21. We also know that negative 7 plus negative 3 is negative 10. Now let's do this last example, and this is really the one we're look, working towards. So I want two numbers that multiply to give me a negative 18x squared, but I want those same two numbers whenever I add them together to give me a negative 3x. Well, the first thing I want to draw your attention to is that these numbers add to give us a negative 3x. So I want to think about something that must be true about these numbers. It is not possible for this to be a negative 3 and this to be an x, because negative 3 plus x is not negative 3x. Those are not like terms. What we know is that for two values to add together and have an x in them, that these must have been like terms. They must both have an x in them. So it's going to be something x and something x, okay? Now, let's come back up here and look at our factors of 18. Uh, the first thing I think of is uh, 9x and 2x. And I know that one of them is going to be negative because they have a negative product, right? So then I come down here to my second row, I'm thinking, well, is there, if I have a negative 9, well, negative 9x plus 2x is not that. So if I make the 2 negative, it's not that. So maybe 9x and 2x aren't the factors of 18 I want to use. So we can just back up and try another set of factors. So uh, I think of other factors of 18, I think of 6x and 3x. And I can come down here as far as figuring out which one's negative and look at this second equation. And for them to add to give us a negative 3x, that's all the information we need to figure out that it should be the 6 that's negative there. Okay? So once again, I know that this whole slide, all this stuff might seem kind of random. And that was a lot of work before we even get to the grouping. But let's move on to how to factor by grouping. You're going to see why this was important. So... Here's what we're going to do, and I'm going very conceptual with this. I want you to understand why grouping works, okay? Um, and so, basically, if you just want to memorize some steps and pass a test, this is not your video. So let's, let's talk about why distribution works, or excuse me, why grouping works. What grouping is, is it's the reverse of distribution, meaning when we distribute, I would start with two factors, and we'd multiply them together, and we'd end up with our trinomial answer. What we're doing when we factor is we're starting with the trinomial answer and we're working backwards to end up back at the factors. So what we're going to do is I'm going to start with these factors and let's just remember how to uh, distribute. And I'm actually going to distribute in kind of a unique way because it's going to be important to our pattern here in a minute. 
You may have learned how to distribute these over here on the left. You may have learned to do it with FOIL or with the box method or something. I'm going to show you a way of distribution that's a little bit different. For example, if I picture this first binomial as a single number, like if this was all just like a 7 out here in front of this other parentheses, like if it was just 7 times x plus 4, we would all know what to do. We would just distribute that 7 or whatever the number was into the second parentheses. Let's imagine doing that with this entire binomial. So if I distribute that entire binomial in, I have um, x times x plus 3 from this first little distribution, x times x plus 3, and then we're going to have 4 times x plus 3. So I've taken this first parentheses and I've distributed it into the x and into the 4, and I end up with this expression. Now I have two little mini distributions I can do. We end up with x squared plus 3x plus 4x plus 12. And then my last step in the distribution is simply to combine those like terms there in the middle and get x squared plus 7x plus 12. Okay? So, once again, we have not factored yet. I've just showed you that if I distribute this certain way, these are going to be my steps to get to my trinomial product. Now, now we're getting to grouping, and what we're going to do is we're basically going to start here. In this process, we're just going to kind of work through it backwards, okay? So let's come over here. If I start with this trinomial, it looks like my first step, if I'm trying to back up to get to the factors, my first step is going to be to break this 7x up into the 3x and 4x. So if I come back here, I've got my x squared, and I've got my 12, but here's the issue that I have. How exactly do I know how to break up this this 7x? Because we're not, we're not going to start with the factors every time. We're trying to figure these out. We don't know what this step is. Like, for example... How do I know I don't break this up into like a, a 1x and a 6x? How do I know I don't break it up into a 5x and a 2x? Well, here's how we're going to know how to break that up. Here's what we're going to do. We're going to come down here. We're going to do some aside work. I'm going to be down here at the bottom. What we're going to do is we're going to look for two numbers that when I multiply them, they give me a 12x squared. 12x squared is the product of the first and the last term. So I'm going to write product of first and last terms. If You can see that if I multiply that 12s times that x squared, it gives me 12x squared. Okay? Now, we want two numbers that do that, but we want the same two numbers whenever I add them to give me a 7x, and 7x is my middle term, okay? So, based on what we did on the previous slide, that's where this comes into play. And so hopefully you're looking at this, you're thinking of your factors of 12, and you're kind of playing with them and figure out how to get them to add to 7. We know everything's going to be positive here, but it's going to be 3x and 4x, okay? 3x and 4x. So... That means that this 7x is getting broken into a 3x and a 4x. Okay, now, let's come back over here. So, so we've taken the 7x, we've broken it into two terms, okay. So we've gotten from our product to this step. Now, how do we get from this step to this step? Well, if you look, it looks like we kind of distributed this x in to get here. So what if we could distribute that x out? Isn't that how we get from this step to here? So to get from here to here, it's like we're distributing the 4. It's like we're factoring it out. And so the process that we're actually doing here is we're grouping. So I'm looking at those first two terms, and I'm looking at those second two terms. And to, to get that x out, in other words, to get from this step to this step, we're factoring that x out to the front here. And we're factoring the 4 out to the front here. So I'm going to look at my first two terms and factor out the GCF. I'm going to look at my second two terms and factor out the GCF. So... But my first two terms, it's x. And when I factor out an x, it's like you're dividing by that x. It's like you undistribute it. So x squared divided by x is x. 3x divided by x is 3. And then I do the same thing with my second set of parentheses. I factor out that 4. And that 4 is the GCF of 4x and 12. And I'm left with the same x plus 3. Now, we've gone from trinomial. We broke up our middle term. And then we grouped our terms and factored out the GCF. We're now here. We're one step away from being done. We're, 
one step away from completing the factoring process, and it looks like we're just going to have to see this x plus 3 that was distributed in. We see that that's common in our two uh, kind of big terms, so we're just going to factor that out to the front. We're going to undistribute the x plus 3, leaving us in our other parentheses with x plus 4. So I see that this stuff here is common, so I'm going to factor it out to the front, leaving us with x plus 4. That goes there, that goes there, okay? Now, like I said, we did a lot of background work. We did a lot of conceptual discussions of what's going on. We're about to get into a couple of just practice problems because, like I said, it's great to have a, a conceptual understanding of what's going on. But let's do some practice problems so we can really get this process down. Uh, this video is getting long, I know. Maybe you want to pause it, um, work through these next couple of problems yourself, and then hit play because uh, I'm going to fly through these next couple of examples pretty quick. Um, I don't want this to turn into like a 30-minute video. So here we go. We are going to factor these two trinomials. Let's start with the first one. And so we got to break up that middle 8x term. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to look for two numbers, and we want those numbers to multiply to give us 12x squared, and 12x squared is the product of those. So those are going to multiply to give us 12x squared, and they're going to add to give us our middle term of 8x. Well, after some playing with the numbers, you should realize it's 6x and 2x. So I'm going to come back over here. I'm going to break up my middle term. And we end up with x squared plus 6x plus 2x plus 12. Now I group my terms. I'm looking for the GCF of the first two terms. The GCF of those, all they have in common is an x, so I factor it out. In other words, divide it out to the front, and I'm left with x plus 6 in the parentheses. I do the same thing with my second set of parentheses. I see what's in common is a 2. So I factor that out. In other words, divide it out of those two terms, and I'm left with, once again, an x plus 6. If we do this process right, these two binomials in the parentheses, parentheses should match. So we factor their entire value out to the front, we undistribute a big x plus 6, and then we're left with x plus 2. Boom, you factored a trinomial. There's your answer, okay? Obviously, multiplication is commutative, so you could have written this in a different order. You could have written it as x plus 2 times x plus 6. Um, and depending how you worked it, your steps may look a little bit different right here. But if you ended up here, you've done it correctly. Now, let's do our last example, and this video will be over. I'm going to start off by doing my aside work. Um, don't let it throw off because we're using Bs. Don't let that confuse you. But what we're doing is we're looking for two numbers that when I multiply them, they give me a negative 3B, excuse me, not a negative 3B squared, a negative 6B squared. And once again, I get that number because it's the product of the first and the last terms. 2B squared times negative 3 is negative 6B squared. I want these same two numbers to add up to B, which is really a 1B. We don't always write that 1 coefficient right there, but that's what it is. So now we're here. Um, once you play around with it, you know that one of your numbers is going to be positive and one of them is going to be negative because they have a negative product. So I'm thinking my factors of 6. It's going to end up being 3B and 2B. And as far as figuring out which one's negative, the way you figure out which one's negative is that they have to add to make a positive 1. Therefore, the 2 is the one that has to be the negative. So, let's break up our middle term. I've got 2b squared plus 3b. And I've got a minus 2b and then minus 3. So we just kind of broke up that middle term into those. Now I do my grouping. I'm going to look at my first two terms and look for the GCF. It looks like all that's in common there is a b. So I'm left with 2b plus 3. And I look at my second two terms, there's not really anything in common there. So the GCF, you consider it a 1, because there's not really anything in common. And this is important. Since this term on the left is a negative, you're going to factor out a negative 1. And when you factor out or divide out a negative 1, that's really just going to change the sign of everything in your parentheses. It's going to make this positive, and it's going to make this positive. And lo and behold, we did it right because our parentheses match. So I'm going to take that entire value of 2b plus 3 and factor it out to the front of my trinomial. And once I factor that out, or the front of my expression, it's not a trinomial, excuse me, 
And once I've done that, what we're left with is B minus 1. There's your factors. So, man, this is the longest video I've ever made. Um, but we've kind of looked conceptually at why factoring by grouping works, how it's the reverse of distributing. And then we did a lot of examples. So hopefully this was helpful.